السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اشاد اللہ اللہ وادہ شریق اللہ و اشاد عنہ محمد ان ابد و رسول اما باد و فاؤز باللہ شیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وائزا سال کا عبادی انفا انی قریب اجیب اداوتا اجیب اداوت ادا ازادان فلیست اجیب علی والیو منوبی لا اللہ یارشدون رسپیکٹڈ امیر صاحب سیار لیون ڈسٹنگوش گیسٹس آف دا پرومس مسایا علیہ صلاۃ وسلام اینڈ ویوز اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ The existence of God and communion with Him is a question that has agitated the minds of man for centuries. Before I start, I want to make it very, very clear. I am no theologian. I'm no scholar. I'm just an ordinary person grown up here like many of you. But I'll try to share with you my limited experience, the miracle that is seeing God Almighty in action. So what does God Almighty himself have to say? The verses you've just heard, God Almighty says, and when my servants ask thee about me, say I am near. I answer the prayer of the supplicant when he prays to me, so they should hearken to me and believe in me that they may follow the right way. Our beloved master, the Holy Prophet of Islam, Hazrat Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, stated that we should beseech God Almighty for all our needs such that even if your shoelace is broken, you should request it from God. The age of the promised Messiah Islam, has witnessed countless events of prayers accepted by God Almighty in which the helpless have been saved, the ill have been cured, and the seemingly impossible has been made possible. The promised Messiah Islam, says in one of his Urdu couplets, Ab nazdeek hai us mere mehboob ke chere ke dikhlane ke din. He says, the days are now near for seeing the face of my beloved. In fact, the promised Messiah had such firm, complete, unshakable conviction in the power of prayer that he himself was willing to subject himself to such scrutiny that he proposed in detail an experiment for testing the acceptance of prayer. The modern scientific world lords the double-blind, controlled, randomized trial as a way of testing scientific theories and providing the proof of an effect. Yet, before this modern scientific world was using this method, the promised Messiah, the Imam of the age, he actually himself proposed such a double-blind, randomized control style uh, trial to test the efficacy of prayer. So his proposal was such that he suggested that we should request volunteers who were suffering from various grave ailments and afflictions and they should join a study where two parties would pray for them to remove their illnesses over a period of a year. And the volunteers were to be from any faith with no discrimination. And the names were to be randomly selected. And the two parties were to be blind as to who was in each slot. And the promised Messiah also said that to be valid, a study like this needs to have a large, large number of participants. He declared in his book, The Heavenly Decree, about this proposal. 
He says, the truth is that just as the all-wise has imbued medicines with efficacy, in spite of the regulations of the laws of nature, so has he invested prayers with their effects that are always proven by actual experiences. Your sitting here in this august Jalsa Salana is in itself a great proof of the existence of God. It is a fulfillment of the promises given to the promised Messiah by God Almighty himself when he revealed to him, I shall cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. So here we are in this quaint village of East Worldham in Hampshire, a world apart from the dusty village of Kadian in the 1800s. So today, I'm not going to share with you the countless proofs of God's existence that he himself has given in his holy book, the Quran. I'm not going to talk about the development of the human eye, nor the development of the human embryo, nor am I going to talk about the orbiting of the sun and the moon, or the darkness at the depths of the oceans, all highlighted by God Almighty 1400 years ago in the Holy Quran. But what I want to share with you today are insights that even today allow all of us to hear God and experience his existence and see him as a living God. By that, I don't mean he has a tongue with which he speaks or his physical eyes. We see him and we hear him through his actions. Over the last 135 years, through the acceptance of prayers of the Promised Messiah Islam and his Khulafa, we have witnessed God Almighty in action. We have witnessed his work. And today, in the modern contemporary times, as we pass through the blessed era of the fifth Khilafat of the Promised Messiah Islam, we are witness to the great power of prayer. And this power of prayer allows us to see the face of our beloved God, a powerful tool that leaves Disney fairy stories way, way behind. Let me try to share with you just a brief selection in this limited time. And what I'm about to share with you are not mere fairy stories. They're experiences that are shared by countless MD Muslims across the world, day in and day out. Hazrat Muslim Oud stated in one of his couplets, Nishan saath hai itne ke kuch shamar nahi, hamare deen ka kissu pe hi madar nahi. There are so many signs with us that they are immeasurable. Our faith is not just based on fairy stories. Let me share with you a few examples. So prayers can be for the simplest of things to supplications for the seemingly impossible. Let's go back to those streets of Kadian over 130 years ago. Imagine the scene. Has a certain Hazrat Ghulam Rasul Rajeki Saab visits a grocer to buy some fruit. He takes along with him his companion, Hazrat Molvi Fazaldin Saab. Hazrat Molvi Fazaldin Saab feels a desire in his heart for some grapes and wishes that Hazrat Rajeki Saab also buy some grapes. Hazrat Rajiki Saab proceeds to the store and buys all sorts of fruit, but sadly doesn't buy any grapes. He completes his purchases and moves on. After some time, he stops and makes an about turn and goes back to the grocer and buys some grapes and proceeds home. 
Along the way, he turns to his companion and says to him, Agar angur hi lene the, to khud hi keh diya hota. Allah ta'ala se kyun khilwaya? If it was grapes that you wanted, you should have said so yourself. Why did you make God ask? Such anecdotes illustrate the beautiful simplicity and practicality of prayer in our everyday, daily lives. However, there are times when the stakes are much higher and the need for divine intervention is literally a matter of life or death. Whilst Hazrat Amirul Mu'mineen Khalifat al-Masih V was in Fiji on the 4th of May 2006, a huge magnitude 8 earthquake struck the Pacific island of Tonga, east of Fiji. The US, US National Weather Service subsequently issued a major tsunami warning for Fiji and New Zealand. The Pacific Tsunami Center states that earthquake of that size has the potential to generate a destructive tsunami that can strike coastlines in the region near the epicenter within minutes to hours. You can imagine the fear in people's hearts. Hazur Akdas himself recalls this event in a dars he gave in 2019. And he says, if Allah Almighty so desires, he can turn around storms. Zur himself describes in this, in this dars about this event. He says everyone was concerned. He was receiving numerous phone calls from family members that was worried about the impending catastrophic tsunami. Hazur Akdas then related at Fajr time, he advised the congregation that I shall pray and we shall all pray together that Allah Almighty turns this tsunami. So you can imagine our beloved Imam beseeches the Almighty with heartfelt prayers. Following the Fajr prayer, Hazur addresses the congregation and he comforts them with these words. Do not worry. Allah the Almighty will bestow his grace. Nothing will happen. After approximately two and a half hours, the news announced that the storm had completely vanished and there was no sign of the tsunami. The promised Messiah tells us our God is one. He's alive today as he was alive in the past. He speaks today as he used to speak in the past. He hears today as he used to hear in the past. Let's move to West Africa, to Guinea, and the capital, Kanakri, just a few years ago. Our missionary, Mulana Tahir Abid Saab, is faced with opposing militias battling each other on the streets of Kanakri. He's in his home with his wife and his children, trying to shelter from the bombs and the bullets that are piercing the walls in his house. He begs Allah the Almighty to save him and his family from this impending catastrophe. He beseeches the prayers of God Almighty and he writes to our beloved Imam for prayers. In the midst of all these battles, he receives instructions from the Murkas that he is to evacuate to Sierra Leone at any cost, at any cost. By God's grace, he finds some people willing to take him and his family across the border to Sierra Leone, approximately 80 miles, a two and a half hour journey. They tell him they shall take him across for $5,000 each. And there's about four or five people of his family. 
He contemplates this in his heart and he cannot accept it. And he thinks to himself, my life is not worth $25,000 of the Jamaat's money. And he declines the offer. Imagine what must be going through his wife's mind and his children, petrified. Some days later, by God's grace, the guns go silent and he ventures out again. Only by Allah's grace, he comes across a driver who's willing to take him across the border and his family. And he only charges him a few hundred dollars. There you have it. A living, breathing, existing God who answers the prayers of his supplicant. Sometimes the Jamaat sends us out to serve the poor, the needy, the disaster-stricken people around the world as volunteers in Humanity First or any other humanitarian organ of the Jamaat. And we sometimes feel that we are actually providing a great service. We are feeding people. We are clothing them. The reality is that we ourselves are actually being helped. It is we that are being shown the signs of a living God when we go out to do this work. A living God that we see by his actions. The favor is being done to us, not the other way around. Let's move about 3,000 miles away from here to the city of Mosul in Iraq. It was ravaged by the battles between ISIS and the Iraqi Liberation Forces in 2017. In March the following year, a Humanity First team visits Iraq on a humanitarian mission to provide medical aid, sanitation, and clothing for the displaced population in northern Iraq. Prior to leaving, as always, the team sought the prayers and the blessings of Hazrat Amirul Mu'mineen for their visit and the responsibilities that they had. The team conducted a very detailed risk assessment using all their knowledge, skills and research to carefully plan a visit to Mosul, keeping in mind the risks. I remembered prior to departure that beloved Hazur Akdas very graciously advised that if you ever run into any difficulty or emergency and you need some guidance, call the private secretary and he will relay your message to me. As we approached the road to the city of Mosul, as a team, we discussed a few matters and we decided for the first time in my life to use the discretion that Hazrat Amirul Mu'mineen had given. And I asked Munir Javed Saab a question. I called and I requested a pre question to be put to Azur Akdas. Looking back, the question that I asked was completely inappropriate. It was a question that would waste Hazur Akdas' beloved time. There was no logic in the question I asked. But Allah clearly had a different plan for the stupid question that I asked. So I asked, we are on our way to Mosul and would like to ask our beloved Imam if it would be a good idea
to take some sweets for the people on behalf of Hazrat Amirul Mu'mineen. A few moments later, the phone rings, and I hear the voice of respected Private Secretary Saab, and he speaks in his soft, gentle voice, and he says, Hazur Akdus ne farmaya hai ke bot zayda volunteer karne ki zururat nahi. Hazur Akdus has stated, it is not necessary to volunteer too much. The message hit me like a bolt out of the blue. I relayed it to our two team members and they both instantly understood that it meant we should turn back. And we all immediately turned back. At the time, neither none of us understood the significance of the message that we had just received, but we obeyed. Some days later, it became all too clear to all of us. We came to know that a number of people had been ambushed along the same road to Mosul City and met their deaths as they crossed the many militia checkpoints along the route. Allah had saved us from certain death. Let's remind ourselves there are so many signs with us that they are immeasurable. Our faith is not based on fairy stories. Let me take you now to Benin in West Africa. A few years ago, our Humanity First team from Germany visits to conduct its medical outreach clinics for hundreds of poor rural communities. During a busy clinic, a lady approaches with a young child, stating that she cannot walk, and can the doctors make her walk? The doctors were helpless. They said, there is nothing medically or clinically we can do to make her walk again. But what we can do is we can pray for her. The team has, for their usual practice, prayed in earnest for the help and the succor of God Almighty. And they paid sadhka. They said, we pray to Allah knowing that we had no medical means to help this child. We asked Allah Almighty to make her walk if it is his will. We know that Allah has sent his Messiah to cure spiritual and physical illnesses. So we asked Allah to grant her shifa if it is his will. The team leader, Dr. Atta Zubair Saab, lifted the child and gradually let her go. And she fell to the floor. He lifts her again and lets her go, and she falls to the floor. You can imagine what people must be saying and looking. He lifts her again for the third time, and he lets her go, and she starts to take the weight of her body on her weak, feeble legs, and everyone is left in tears at the miracle of Allah's work. My dear brothers and sisters, the story doesn't end there. Sometimes later, sometime later, one of the team members was approached by another parent in the same predicament, asking to make their child walk also. The young team leader approaches the team lead Sorry, the young team member approaches the team lead asking, please, can you also make this child walk? The team leader, Dr. Zubair, sensing that this was in some way belittling the huge miracle that they had witnessed, and this was beyond the dignity of God Almighty, he responded that this is not a joke that you have just witnessed this miracle. 
It's not something we can order on tap. However, the response of the young man left him dumbfounded. He said, the same God that made her walk can make him walk. Dr. Zubair states that the young man's answer left him speechless and he recited Astaghfar that who was he to be the gatekeeper over God Almighty's grace and mercy. So they all gathered and they prayed with heartfelt pain and anguish to God Almighty to show his mercy, to show his mercy on this child. And lo and behold, Allah's divine grace and mercy kicked in and the young boy also began to walk. The power of our living God is not just manifest in the heart of Africa. It's manifest in many war-torn parts of the world. The war in Gaza, as you know, has led to over 39,000 people killed. Amidst the death, the destruction and the agony, every day we witness some or other favor of Allah Almighty. There are a handful of servants of the promised Messiah in Gaza who begged God Almighty that they may be able to serve their fellow Gazans. But they had no way to help. They themselves are helpless, displaced, with limited food and water. By Allah's grace, this team now runs over eight projects across Gaza, providing clean drinking water to tens of thousands every day, providing shelter to thousands, education to children, psychosocial support to traumatized children, food parcels across northern Gaza, all beyond their wildest expectations. Recently, as the bombing intensified in Rafah in southern Gaza, and they received orders to evacuate, this team of servants of humanity who dedicate their lives for serving their fellow man also had to evacuate with their families. They had to leave with limited belongings and in extremely hazardous conditions. And they begged their Lord to help them find somewhere they could lay their head with 50 men, women, and children. The evacuation area known to all of you as the Al Mawasi area will be known to many of you. It's a barren area with over a million internally displaced people all desperately looking for shelter. Our team search far and wide to lay their heads. There is nowhere. Their prayers are supported by the constant prayers of His Holiness, Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen, as he's appraised of their situation on a daily basis. The next day, tears roll down the eyes of our team lead, Yasser Shaheen, as they witness the impossible. Only by God's grace, they come across a 700 square meter piece of land where they're able to set up their camp for their families as a respite from the relentless bombing. As we reflect on the miraculous support and resilience shown by our brothers and sisters in Gaza, we're reminded of the countless times that humanity faces adversity and is overcome by the help of God Almighty. The last century has seen countless earthquakes and natural disasters. Despite these disasters and despite this misery, it has allowed countless servants of the promised Messiah al-Islam to dedicate their time, their efforts to serve these populations. And in doing so, they witness untold examples of the acceptance of prayer. February 2023, a massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake hits Turkey and Syria. 
volunteers from Humanity First start serving the devastated communities. A team of disaster responders leave for Syria via Turkey from here in the UK in response to a call from the United Nations. Despite the detailed preparations and the liaison with all the relevant authorities, we spent the majority of our time in Turkey facing many, many obstacles to enter Syria. We wrote for further prayers to Hazrat Abir al-Mu'mineen on the 26th of February, 2023. We asked, we beg Hazur Akdas' prayers that Allah Almighty grants us whatever is best for serving the Syrian people and remove any obstacles in the way. That same day, the reply returns with Azur's handwritten signature and read the words dua, prayer, written by his blessed hand. This strengthened everyone's faith. We were convinced God would help us. Yet, the next day, we were invited by the WHO authorities to be told that we have not been selected to enter Syria. It seemed like the end of the mission, yet it was miraculously to turn around. The next evening, we were taken to meet some Turkish elders from a humanitarian organization with links to the governor of the region who controls permission to access Gaza. He met the team and he said, it is as if God Almighty has sent you to us tonight. As we left the gathering, we were overwhelmed at the miraculous turn of events. Some people turned around and said, the governor has agreed to allow you to enter Syria. Again, the impossible made possible. The promised Messiah stated, the philosophers state there ought to be a creator but I lead you to a higher stage and affirm on the basis of my personal experience that God exists. In conclusion, let's remind ourselves that the same God that spoke to Prophet Moses on Sinai speaks today. The same God that spoke to Prophet Abraham speaks today. And the same God that gave succor to our beloved Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, in the cave of Thor with Hazrat Abu Bakr, he speaks today as he ever did.